Black holes are complex cosmic phenomena, with every aspect of their nature proving intricate. When a massive star, about 10 to 20 times more massive than the Sun, consumes all of its fuel, the delicate balance between gravity and pressure collapses, leading to the star's implosion and subsequent supernova explosion. The challenge in our current comprehension lies in the necessity to apply different theories to elucidate events occurring on various scales. Quantum field theory, for instance, effectively describes the nuanced behavior of particles, from atoms to the smallest subatomic components of matter. However, when applied to cosmic scales, this theory becomes inadequate. Instead, scientists turn to Einstein's general relativity to tackle such vast tasks. Selecting the appropriate theory is crucial, as it ensures that calculations yield accurate results. Nevertheless, black holes present a unique challenge. Initially, they are immense stellar entities large stars. And then, they quickly shrink to much smaller, sometimes quantum sizes. For example, in order for the sun to become a black hole, it would have to be squeezed to the size of just about 1.8 miles, 2.9 kilometers, in radius. Theoretically, you can turn any object into a black hole. There's a formula that tells us how much something has to be squeezed to become one. This threshold is known as the Schwarzschild radius, and if you wonder just how tiny our planet would have to be to turn into a black hole, imagine the entire Earth as a ball with a radius of 0.35 inches, 0.88 centimeters. But what if an object's radius is zero? Traditional calculations, both math and physics, become meaningless, and so we call this phenomenon a singularity. But does such a concept truly appear in the physical world? Let's try to break it down. Consider this thought experiment, if you wanted to make the simplest version of a black hole, you'd start with tiny bits of matter floating around in space. They don't push against anything, but simply hang there. They resemble small specks of dust floating very close to each other, almost motionless. However, in space, gravity comes into play, pulling them together and reducing the space between the dust particles. Over time, these tiny specks of dust begin to compress more tightly, eventually reaching a point where their combined mass and gravity become so intense that they start to compress the space around them. This compression creates an event horizon, a boundary that allows things to enter but prevents anything from escaping. This type of black hole is known as a Schwarzschild black hole. It possesses mass, which is the amount of matter that went into forming it, but it lacks any electric charge or spinning motion. Now, consider what would happen if you were to cross the event horizon of such a black hole. Let's imagine that it's large enough for you to enter with a spaceship. Once inside, if you were to panic and attempt to escape by firing thrusters to accelerate outward, physics dictates that regardless of the direction the ship is facing, you would still be drawn toward the central singularity. To understand this, imagine a long, narrow corridor with no way out except through a door at the end. Once you step into this corridor, the door shuts behind you, and there's no way to open it again. The corridor has a moving walkway, much like the travelator in an airport, and it's taking you forward at the speed of light. No matter which way you try to move, either running in the opposite direction of the walkway, or moving sideways, you'll still end up being carried forward by the walkway. Or, at least, this is how scientists thought black holes acted. However, space-time gets way more complicated when you have a mass which rotates, and so far, we only know about the existence of black holes that have angular momentum or a spin. They form from the collapse of rotating massive stars, and as matter collapses, the rotation is conserved, leading to the formation of a spinning black hole. Quantum mechanics was created to explain the strange world of miniature scales. But instead of giving us answers, it led to more uncertainty, like fluctuations in the fabric of space-time. And these quantum fluctuations play a significant role when it comes to event horizons surrounding black holes. Now, we've all heard that nothing can escape a black hole. But this is where things get tricky. Near an event horizon, particles and antiparticles spontaneously pop in and out of existence, annihilating one another almost instantly. But what if one of these particles manages to escape the stronghold of a black hole? The late great Stephen Hawking explained this with his theory of Hawking radiation. When a particle-antiparticle pair forms near the event horizon, one of them falls into a black hole while the other one escapes. And by doing so, the free particle steals energy from the black hole. If you give it enough time, and we're talking numbers impossible to imagine, 1068 to 10103 years, 
a black hole would evaporate completely, leaving nothing behind. But if there's nothing left behind, where does this infinite singularity go then? In the real universe, infinities do not exist or, at least, we haven't found any yet. When scientists encounter calculations that result in infinity, it suggests a flaw in the theory, it's too basic to handle extreme scenarios. Consider a guitar string plucked at its resonant frequency. According to a simple wave model, the string's vibration would exponentially increase, theoretically extending beyond the moon, the stars, infinitely, and then returning. However, despite the model's prediction, reality behaves differently. The appearance of infinity in the model indicates oversimplification and inherent limitations. While the model works well for explaining small string vibrations, a more robust theory is needed to address infinite values. How does this relate to our understanding of black holes? If singularities aren't real, perhaps, at the center of every black hole lies something entirely different, something beyond what we can fully grasp. But as always, scientists have some ideas. According to Penrose's theorem, singularities are inevitable in general relativity. Anything that moves in space, and is only experiencing effects of gravity, should follow a specific path, a so-called geodesic. Basically, it's the shortest, most efficient path, both spatially and temporally. The idea is that all of space-time is structured like that, the universe is one gigantic fabric, and its form is dictated by these geodesic lines, some of which are straight, and the other curved. These paths are never-ending, just like a line drawn over a spherical object. But Penrose suggested that geodesics should converge inside black holes, ending at their centers, which means that paths of space-time itself terminate, and you have a singularity or an infinity. Stephen Hawking believed that this is how the Big Bang started, as a singularity, or in other words, geodesics that trace back to one single point. Although a recently published paper by Roy Kerr suggests a very different perspective on black holes. Rotation of matter changes everything. Instead of a single event horizon marking the boundary beyond which nothing can escape, spinning black holes have two distinct horizons, an outer horizon and an inner one. These horizons are like invisible walls, marking the regions where the gravitational pull becomes too strong for even light to break free. Rotating black holes also have something called ergospheres, swirling zones surrounding a black hole where space-time itself is dragged along by its rotation faster than the speed of light. If you happen to be there, no matter how hard you try to remain stationary, it would be to no avail. In a way, these ergospheres are like whirlpools in space-time, influencing the movement of nearby objects, which come in contact with each other, producing extremely bright light. Because of how insanely fast things move there, if an object managed to escape an ergosphere, it would leave with much more energy than it entered with. In theory, this mechanism is the source of nearly limitless energy. Although learning how to extract it seems like an impossible task. And then again, there's still the singularity. Although it doesn't have a point-like shape, but rather a ring-like structure due to the effect of angular momentum that smooths it out. Here's a simplified way to visualize this, Imagine a drop of paint falling onto a piece of paper. If the paper is stationary, the paint forms a single dot. But, if you spin the paper fast as the drop falls, the paint spreads out, creating a ring-like shape. And so if matter falls into a black hole along this perplexing path, its path isn't like a simple circle that stays in one plane. Instead, it moves all over the place, kind of like a bee buzzing around in the air. Over time, the particle's path fills up a three-dimensional shape, Particles around spinning black holes do not follow a flat path, instead, they move in various directions, forming a donut-like shape in space. Unlike a stone sinking straight to the bottom of a pond, particles attracted by a rotating black hole do not simply cross the event horizon and head directly into the central singularity. The movement is more akin to tossing a leaf into a strong wind, where the swirling motion of the wind carries the leaf in multiple directions, sometimes closer to the ground and other times lifting it upward. These spinning black holes, known as Kerr black holes, do not possess true singularities, and matter does not necessarily end up falling into their central singularities. Beyond the event horizon, the centrifugal force creates an almost normal spacetime around ring singularities. Here, objects can move in various directions, potentially remaining in motion for a considerable duration. The ring singularity is essentially a gravitational field inside a black hole, resulting from the spin of the object. Imagine this intriguing follow-up. When a star collapses to form a black hole, 
the star itself remains inside the resulting dark entity. Fragments of the star follow predetermined paths, never truly disappearing. Even light persists within. Can you picture such a place? It's like a perpetual centrifuge, cut off from the rest of the universe, yet with its own miniature world swirling within, illuminated by an otherworldly glow. What are your thoughts on this fresh perspective on black holes? Share your insights in the comments below. Subscribe now to stay updated with our latest videos.